I love that joke. That's a great joke. That's Michelle. Oh. You can steal that one. I will. Okay, so, ready? Yes. How many times do you go potty during the day? Is this a serious question? Yeah, I mean, between the hours of, say, like, 8 and 4. Okay. How many times do you go potty? Uh, all in all, like both types together, I'm going to go with five. Five? Yeah. Which I've been told is way too many. Like people, people react just like that. Like I've met people that are like, I go, you know, the serious one, maybe once or twice or once every two days. Really? I was like, are you kidding me? Five times? Yeah. Wow. I want to know where this is leading. (laughs) Okay. Well, um, you would not make it at Fresno High School. No? No. At Fresno High School, the kids on their phones have a potty app. Sure. Okay. So when they want to go potty, mm-hmm. they go on the app, and if there are, like, less than 25 people at any given moment going potty. In the whole school. In the whole school. Okay. They get to go potty. So they have to check in and check out? And guess what? How many minutes do you think they give them for a potty break? I mean, a normal potty break on average should take you about, I don't know, eight minutes? Seven. Seven, okay. Seven minutes. If so you're you, really just focused. Yes. Yeah, so, but you have to walk downstairs. That's right. what the kids are complaining. Sure, I would saying, too. They're saying like, you know, we have to walk downstairs. We got to open the door. Then we have to go potty. And then we have to wash our hands, take a few pics. <laughs> right. Come, there, come back up. Heard. The only reason the school's doing this is because the kids abuse it. I mean, yes. I was a student once. I absolutely abused it. Of course. We all did. Yeah. All did. So you get two potty breaks a day. That's not enough. Okay. And if you, you would die. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Andrew would be like. I would just have to sit there with a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Yes. That's wrong with your pants. <laughs> Nothing. Stop looking. <laughs> and what, guess what happens if you're late? Uh, detention. Uh, you don't get any other potty breaks. This is ridiculous. My son just had this thing happen this week. He had to go to the bathroom with the substitute, and the substitute was like, no, not right now. And he's like, it's an emergency. And she's like, no, not right now. There's too many kids in the bathroom. Oh. And he just went. He didn't listen to her. Well, you know, he could have just rolled with it. Is that a joke? Yeah. Get it like toilet paper oh, roll. Oh, God. That was a long <laughs> stretch. No, it back. was not. I came up with that all by myself. <laughs> you see? And on that happy note, welcome. It's Kim Commando today. It's your Monday, Wednesday, Friday podcast about all things digital. That we just have a great old time here every single time we do Kim Commando today. Right, Andrew Babinski? Absolutely. Every, well, that's a good way to introduce me is you just use my full name when yes. speaking to me. Yes, Kim Commando. <laughs> yes. It is a great old time. Okay, so um, I have a letter from our listener mail cool. that I'm going to be reading. Really interesting guy. Nice. Um, what do you have? Australia. They are one step away from implementing a full-fledged government-controlled digital ID system that they want to use for Everything. So you only have one password. So are, does this mean you're moving to Australia? No, because I don't think I'm in favor of this. No, not no. at all. Okay, so now if you are listening to the audio version of the podcast, we love that. But we just want to remind you that you can also watch Andrew and I do the podcast, which is like so exciting. It's so thrilling. It'll totally make your day. You are making up from Friday when you just trashed the video podcast. I did. And now you're super selling it. I, I appreciate am. this. Thank you. Because it's on YouTube, Rumble, Facebook, 1130 on the West Coast. What, 230 on the East Coast? Big math. <laughs> every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, every single week. And just a quick reminder before we get started. Um, that we do welcome your comments. And so you want to, like, comment, share. Hi, guys. Welcome to the video. (laughs) Okay. And so we're going to read the best comments at the end. And, of course, you know, the comments that are really positive about me Mm. are just destined to be read. Pushed right to the front of the line. (laughs) And the comments, like, dissing Andrew. Pushed right in front of those. (laughs) Okay, just something like that. So make sure that as you're watching the video, wherever you're watching the video, make sure that you give us some great comments. Um, And as we go through the news, if you have anything that you want to share with us, you have any questions, that's always a good time. Yeah. Um, If you are wondering, like, why Andrew and I are matching today. Yeah, this is weird. We're all brown. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe because it's kind of a cloudy day. And we started the show with a bathroom story. This is weird. It's all coincidental. And then you can enter to win, not you, Andrew, you can enter to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Let me tell you, 
so many people are not entering. So you have a great <laughs> chance of winning. In case you're wondering, like, what's the catch? Well, the catch is, is that you have to get just one issue of our free newsletter. Just one. That's all. I mean, you're going to want to keep it after that. It's just a piece of cake. But you just have to read one newsletter to be entered in. That's it. 500 That's bucks. And then you can unsubscribe at any time. But you're not going to want to do that. No, of course not. <laughs> All right. So here are the top five things that are happening in the tech verse that you need to know right now. Number one, do you have at and No. Great. Because otherwise, you'd be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at and came out, of course, after hours on Friday. Okay. We're not going to do this during the day. Well, no, because then people might actually see it and start talking about exactly. it. Exactly. So they wait until after, like, Friday at 5 p.m. and really Saturday morning to say... Well, you know how, like, we've been talking about, like, we might have had this little tiny data breach, mm -hmm. and it might have affected, like, 7.6 million people? Right. Well, it's more like 79 million people. So my number, which was totally wrong when I reported it, was closer than I thought. Yes. <laughs> yes. 79 million people. Yes. Wow. Social security numbers on the web. That's not good. And so at t says that you should reset your PIN. <laughs> Didn't they change a bunch of people's passwords? Automatically. Automatically. That was 7.6 million. They did. Well, that's smart, though. I actually was talking about it. I host a radio show for iHeartMedia on KEZ. <laughs> KEZ. <laughs> and we were talking about it, and I was like, that's actually a pretty good policy. What if everybody implemented that? There's a data breach, and they automatically just change your password. Because it's easy enough to change it back. So, KEZ, how many radio stations is that? Uh, that's one. Okay. Yeah, just one okay. radio Do you station. ever notice, like, when I talk about things, I don't mm -hmm. say, like, well, I host a weekend radio <laughs> show on, like, 510 stations. You do it every single day that we do this podcast. Do not. You mention the radio show. I keep it very humble. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we all describe you. Kim Commando, so humble. Okay, so here's the deal. If you have AT&T, make sure that you change your PIN, make sure you change your password. Make sure you change to T-Mobile. <laughs> is it too late, though? I mean, all my stuff's out there. What does it, it matter? It is. It's already been sold eight or nine times over. Wow, already. Yeah. Just in a couple of weeks. Do you think we're getting white noise with data breaches that people are just like, well, whatever? Yeah, I absolutely do. I think, so too. I think we don't even emotionally react to it anymore. The only reason people reacted to this one is because AT&T went offline for a little bit and they couldn't, you know, exactly. watch their TikTok and get their text messages. Oh. That's the only reason why they cared. What am I going to do? Do you? Do you? You're deeper than all of us are when it comes to the tech world. Do you still have Do you have white noise to all these data breaches? Yeah, I do. Yeah. There's a service you can use to see if your stuff's on the dark web. I don't even want to know because I know it's already out there. What <laughs> am I going to do about it? I know. It's like we talk about that website, Have I Been Pwned? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to go there to put in your email address and to find out if you're on the list. Okay, spoiler, you're already on the list. Right. Okay. And if my social security number's out there, what am I going to do, change it? <laughs> no, you can't. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Try. Add one more number to it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. It doesn't matter. Okay, so April 8th, the big eclipse is happening. Yes. Ooh, totality. Barry comes to me yesterday and goes, do you think it's too late for us to figure out how to see the eclipse? I'm like, um, a week from now? Yeah, I think so. Why would it be too late? No, okay. Just get in the car, you and him, the open road. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. How long? We wouldn't <laughs> even make it to Apache Junction. No, you wouldn't. I mean, it'd be like... What? I mean, every once in a while we'll be driving along, somebody like, you yeah, has this beautiful RV, and he's mm -hmm. like, you know, Kim, we should do that. I'm like, not on your <laughs> life. Okay, not. Okay, so the big clip's happening. So there are people all online talking about Ninvia. What is that? Ninvia. Well, that is a biblical reference. Okay. That if, and, and now these people on TikTok and social and stuff, they're saying that there are eight references to the eclipse in Ninvia. And what that means is that this is the mark, per the Bible, for the end of the world. Next Monday? Yeah. I got to get some stuff done. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not going to get anything done. It's going to be the end of the world. It won't now, matter. Now, I did some research. Yeah. The eclipse also goes over Santa Claus, Indiana. Okay. It also goes over uh, Ding Dong, Texas. <laughs> okay. If I'm going anywhere to watch the eclipse, I'm going to Ding Dong. No, I'm going to this. Booger hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be near Ding Dong than Booger Hole. <laughs> Booger Hole, West Virginia. <laughs> Who named their city Booger Hole? <laughs> so if you start thinking about this, okay, Christmas, just because of the eclipse, is not mm -hmm. coming early. No. With donuts. No. And boogers. <laughs> no. Okay. So I don't think the end of the world's going to be here. So, uh, you know, make sure that you sign up for that $500. Right. You're going to be able to spend it. 
All right. Uh, meanwhile, the second largest airport in Alaska is what? I don't even know the first. La- I'm going to guess Anchorage is the first largest airport. So what's the second one? Uh, Booger Hole, <laughs> Alaska. Don't know, you don't know two cities <laughs> Juno? in Alaska. Is it Juneau? Uh, Anchorage is actually number two. Really? Yes. What's number one? Juno. Oh, I had them reversed. All right. Kind of. A little bit. Have you ever been to Alaska? No. It's beautiful. Wait a minute. No. I haven't. Uh, you have not. <laughs> you had to think about that? Well, because I went to, my sister married uh, an Alaskan, and I went up north for their wedding, but I just realized that it was in uh, Washington and not Alaska. They're oh. close, though. Kind of. Kind of close. So they have a problem uh, on the tarmac. What's wrong? In, in Anchorage. Well, you know, because this is Alaska, mm-hmm. they have a problem with, like, fox and coyotes and uh, birds all hanging out. So what they did is they got a Boston Dynamics dog. No, one of those scary yes. robot dogs? And so headless dogs. Yeah, they're okay. so terrifying. Okay, so now they're going to have this little guy just bounce around the tarmac to make sure that, like, the fox and the coyotes and the birds don't get on the runway. Well, the whole point is to save the animals, right? Because the plane's not going to see a fox, and it's going to run Well, it's actually save people, too, so that this way we don't have birds go in the (laughs) engines, okay? so Are they going to give it a bark? Are they going to give the robot dog a bark so it can just What I thought was interesting is, no, they're not going to give it a bark, but they're going to change the panels. So, like, on this robotic dog, if they want it to be, like, a Labrador, mm-hmm. they'll put like two panels that look make it look like a Labrador. Oh. If they want to make it look like a fox, it'll look like a fox. And for once, look like a coat. But, That's you know, a big fox. But I was also thinking like, you know, part of the whole animal detection devices are like smells. Yeah. I wonder how they're going to do that. Is it going to smell? And it doesn't say so. I mean, they could cover it in like deer urine. So I'll, I'm not trying to say that to be outrageous. They could. They could. And then that would be a warning sign for animals. Man, no, something scary. It's got like a predator's urine. Like or how about, urine. like, like your grandma's perfume? Oh, I would run away from that. <laughs> like, oh, no. Hard ribbon candy coming at us. <laughs> run. Hard ribbon candy. That's funny, Andrew. All right, so Kia. Yeah? Another major recall. Mm. This time, 430,000 Tellurides. Yeah, these are the vehicles that, uh, when you put them in park... They don't bark. <laughs> That's the recall. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, what they do is they say that there's a problem with the car, if you do put it in park, that it might just roll away. Yeah, that's not parking. Yes. Okay. That's the opposite of the P on the... Uh... For sure. Yeah. And when that happens, you have Nokia. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was as bad as the turtle shell. It was. Okay. Cyber trucks. Have you seen them around town? I have seen a few. I've only seen one, and I thought it was so cool, and everybody I was with was like, oh, that's ugly. I thought it was so cool. It's unique. It's different. Why do you think? I just like the way that it looks. It's the future. It's the way in the 80s when you watched any futuristic movie, how the vehicles would look like. It looks like, I mean, you just slap a couple of guns on that, and you have a halo. I but, mean, yeah, it's just, absolutely. It. It's cool. It's different. It is. Okay, but like on a Tesla and many other cars, mm-hmm. you have a trunk that's in the back, and in the front, you have a frunk. Right. Okay, so a frunk Mm -hmm. and a trunk. Right, because there's no engine, like a standard car, no gas-powered engine. I've had to explain to people, like, you know, oh, it's in the frunk, and people are like, it's a frunk. (laughs) Excuse me? Yeah. I would not use that type of language. No. So, um, something bad's happening with the Cybertruck. What's happening... Is it with the frunk? It's with the frunk. What's happening with is the that, frunk? I mean, this is like a, this really should be a PSA. Sure. A public safety announcement. Because if you have a cyber truck and if you have a frunk, look at what could happen to your fingers. I want to see this. Look at this. No There's pinch the frunk. sensor, right? No, it's just straight metal. Yep. Okay. And, uh... Christoph, if you wouldn't mind hitting the button on this one for us. That's a carrot. They're putting in the carrot in the front. Sorry. Yes. Watch what happens to the carrot. Now, imagine if that yeah. was your finger. Sure. Okay, again, I think we're a pretty similar point to where the Rivian was. Oh, it doesn't stop. <laughs> and it, and it latches it on soft clothes. But uh, no question, don't ever put your fingers indoors. We also have a Tesla Model X mm-hmm. that has, Is it gonna do the you same know, from thing? Tesla. They do have pinch sensors on Model X. Yes. Oh, okay. Areas. That's on the door. Yes. The door's closing on the yep. carrot. There it is. And oh, it is. <laughs> Those sensors work really well, don't well, they? Well, maybe it just so knows it's a, a carrot and doesn't X, care. It runs all the way from here 
up. And what happened was my, the carrot was so far in, it hit the paint mm -hmm. and not the pinch sensor. But mm -hmm. your fingers could be so far in that it hits the paint mm -hmm. and not the pinch sensor. Okay, so, so the bottom line here what the is frunk? don't put your carrots yeah. near the frunk. Or your cucumber. <laughs> or <laughs> your pickle. <laughs> Keep all vegetables away from the frunk. Your pickle? Yeah. It's, it's similar to a carrot or a cucumber. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> I could have used eggplant. That would have been even more obvious. Yeah, that's true. That's I didn't, true. though. I but, didn't go there. But I don't have a Tesla anymore. I know. You got rid of it. Yeah, it is. So I don't care it at all. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> See, that was good. It was good. I like Every it. once in a while. Yes, you have a gem. It's like uh, one out of ten. Hey, it's Kim Commando today. Just a reminder to make sure that you like. What that means is that you hit that thumbs up button. Right. Okay. You comment. That means that you leave a smart message. Or you can say hi. Or you can say hi. Okay. Or uh, you can also share. Yeah. Just we never say subscribe, though. Okay, well, yeah. Okay, well, then there's another four. That's like four things. That's true. We are asking a lot. Yeah, so then you have to subscribe. Yeah. Okay, and then somebody will always say, well, does that mean, Kim Commando, that this costs me money? <laughs> yeah, yes, it does. If you talk like that, it absolutely <laughs> costs you money. I mean, sometimes people ask the dumbest <laughs> questions. No, you don't have to cost anything to subscribe. It's free. It just updates you when new episodes of this podcast become available. That's and it. That's why you should subscribe. Right. Absolutely. You don't even have to look at the clock. Your, your apps will tell you, hey, the Kim Commando Today podcast is starting. Which we love that. Run. Run now to the nearest device and watch it. I'll tell you the podcast that's really taken off. Which is? The Daily Tech Update. Oh, nice. And the D Digital Life Hack. Why can't we get that on your one station? Maybe because you belittle it <laughs> so much. <laughs> you know what's funny is that we've been talking about having you and Beth over to the house. Mm -hmm. And so Barry's like, hey, have you heard from Andrew about that again? I said, oh, no. I said, we were going to set it up. Then we went to Japan, which, you know, right. we should set that up. And then um, I said, yeah. And Barry said, so what are we going to do with him? I said, I don't know. I said, but I need to talk to Beth. About? And Barry's like, what? I said, she needs to put the digital life hack on her show. She doesn't program and, direct the station. Okay, Barry looked at me and goes, you can't talk to somebody about that. You can't invite somebody over and then pitch them. Yes, you can. I'm like, what do you expect? We don't make those decisions. You have to talk to way more important people over at KEC. Who is that? Uh, I don't know. They all just quit. <laughs> and I'm not joking. <laughs> Excellent. Good deal. All right. So this is happening in Australia. And I guess the question is when you talk about it, I mean, is as you're talking about it, we should be thinking about, is this something that we would definitely want here in the United States. And if it passes in Australia, then it's definitely going to start spreading across the world. And that is a social digital ID. The Senate in Australia passed this, and it's going to go to the House. The House is definitely, because of the party affiliations, the House is definitely going to pass it there. And what it is, is during COVID, they set up this My Life ID system through the government so it would be easier for people to access all of their social services. And now they want to expand that to not only everything to do with the government, but private companies as well. The benefits they say is, first of all, you have one password. Okay. When you go to anything, anything online, your bank, uh, your grocery so store. So somebody cracks at the one password? Well, don't worry. It's the government. They'll definitely keep oh, it secure. I Gosh, see. Gosh, you're already jumping to the negatives, Kim Sorry. Commander. I'm normally like, you know... You know, rainbows, ponies, flowers. I'm Absolutely. Uh, you wouldn't need a driver's license. You wouldn't need to have a passport. This would all be under your digital ID, all your logins to your bank, your social media. And the companies that sign up for this would be held accountable. They would have to prove to the government that your data that they do collect is okay. secure. Also, through this digital ID, they don't really need anything to know anything about you because the government is verifying who you are. So they don't need to have your address, your phone number, any of that information. Sounds great. So, and I can tense, I can sense the sarcasm <laughs> in your voice. Uh, but some bits of personal information would only be stored one place. You know how, you know, you go on a website and they're like, hey, sign up for a free trial and you got to give them everything? I well, it wouldn't that. be there because it would be in this one data uh, portion, again, controlled by the government. So they would know every single thing that you're doing. Well, that's the downside. <laughs> Is it's, it's definitely, it's volunteer, the, right. the bill that they're going to pass, and they would have to set up new legislation if they were going to make it mandatory. Uh, but yes, everything you sign up for, 
like I said, your bank, your social media, your porn, your fries card, your porn, everything you sign up for will all be in one central location in, that's controlled by the government. Now, one of the people that is against this came out and said during COVID, they had these QR codes because they wanted to track super spreaders yes. and people who were transmitting COVID to other people. So before you would go into any public establishment, you would hit a QR code. Well, what would happen was is that that information was controlled by the government. So a fight broke out in a bar. The police went to the government instead of getting a subpoena. They just asked for who was at that bar that day, and they went and found the two people that got into the fight at the bar. Why would this not carry over to this social digital idea? Why were they expo- Why were would. they fighting? I mean, that's what I want to know. I didn't get into the details <laughs> of the mean- fight. I'm sure it was over the uh, whether the uh, Crocodile Dundee movie was good or not, <laughs> uh, because it is Australia. I have no idea why they were fighting. But so people <laughs> are like, worried. People ask you this. <laughs> you're like, what does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> because every, I mean, there some people are taking to the degree of you go and sign up to buy an airline ticket and the airline says, no, you can't because you haven't paid your parking fees because that's all part of the same database. I don't want this. No, not a lot of people uh, do. I mean, obviously, if it's volunteer, then there's fi- that's fine, right? If it's volunteer, because you're choosing then to put yourself in this pool of people. Oh, my God. Imagine that thing's going to get totally hacked. Oh, absolutely it would. And what's so funny is that this part of the bill is if you are a company that uses it and they feel like you're going to be part of a data breach or I don't know, how do you feel like someone's going to be part of a data Um, breach? um, (laughs) We talked to a psychic, a psychic kangaroo, and it told us that you're you're going to be a data breach. I mean, you know, if only they knew that Steve Irwin shouldn't have been out on that day. Exactly. Um, But Or if you get data breached, the government can take away your access to this digital ID program. The one thing that really I think is a good part of it is that these the companies that are part of it have to spell out in plain English and in obvious text who they're going to sell your information to and what information about you they're going to sell. Okay, but they're going to sell to one person and then they're going to sell to yeah, somebody else true. and they're going to sell to somebody else. I mean, I don't see a lot of upside. I see a lot of upside for the government. And oh, for absolutely. Okay. Don't see a lot of upside for those of us here at home. Simplification of where your data is stored is a possible upside. And the fact that you don't have to carry around any multiple IDs, it's all digital and built into your phone, that could be an upside. And the one password for everything you do online, again, could be an upside. But otherwise, you're right. It's all about data collection on Do you us. carry a wallet? A digital wallet? No, just a wallet. Yeah, I have a regular wallet. What's in the wallet? Uh, credit cards and... My security cards for getting into buildings. That's it. And then picture of your current girlfriend? No. Have that safe right here in my current <laughs> girlfriend folder of my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You know, I know, you know, Jane is a nice girl. She's a nice woman. Jennifer is her oh. name. You're getting me more and more in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Jane? <laughs> there is no Jane. There is no Jane. I thought that there was. Stop it. You said Jane. There are real life trickles that happen from the things you say on this podcast that was, you don't have to deal with. Maybe it was maybe it was Helen. There's no. Oh yeah, Helen. She's cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Kim Commando today. Make sure that you like, comment, share. But we really want your comments because this way we can interact with you. So it's not just a one way street. It's like we giveth, you taketh, and then you giveth, and we taketh. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like that. It's just like that. I was just thinking that. And we have some all-star all-star commenters that uh, Scotty, yeah, who chime in every single podcast. But it shouldn't Liz. just be them. It should be everybody. Yeah, we want everybody. And Arturo. Arturo Torres. Have you heard from Arturo? In a I week? have heard oh, from good. Arturo. Yes. You know, we signed up for the Commando community. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, if you want to be like a number one fan here, you should be signed up for the Commando community because we're going to make some big changes and the price is going to go up. 
Really? So if you want to get in now, you yeah, should. I'm walk just that price in. Okay. Can I use my government digital ID to log into the uh, command? We already community? have that. No. Okay. We already have it. Oh, we do. It's okay. okay. It's fine. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, don't forget to enter to win that $500 Amazon gift card because I'm going to be ending this contest because it's people really want an iPhone. I thought like everybody who wanted an iPhone would already have an iPhone. You're going to prematurely end it? Yeah, because you know what? People don't really want it. But don't the rules stipulate that? I you can ha- change the rules. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Look at whose name is everywhere. <laughs> the all and powerful Oz. Ooh, yes. Yeah, I guess no one's going to be upset if you end it early and their odds increase of winning. So James Yon, not spelt like. Oh, I was going to say. You know, uh, uh, from Aiken, South Carolina. He says, hi, Kim and the A-team. The rest of the A-team will be here on Wednesday. Yes, absolutely. Or Friday. We're not sure yet. Oh, we love Allie. Uh, we love Allie. Uh, on your podcast, I've heard you say several times, Kim, that the web is dead. I Can I interrupt real quick? You're the first person that's ever said it and af- that I've heard say it. And after you said it, it made so much sense. I should probably do an article about it. You really should because I don't see it anywhere else. And you- But you're so right. It doesn't. I don't go to websites. We don't need them. Mm-mm. Don't need them anymore. Um, Andrew was just talking about how AI popped right up on his screen. Yeah. No searching required. I see this uh, for informational websites, but what about digital storefronts? Will AI only put out information that ranks with its corresponding search? Like, will Bard only pull information from Google and how you rank on Google? Not only that, how would a small business, say a mom-and-pop florist, be able to get in front of AI so that our online business still grows and can take advantage of AI? Okay, this is a great question. It is. Okay, well, first let's talk about the web is dead. Yeah. Okay. It used to be that when you wanted something, uh, like for Easter dinner, I made a 5.1 pound chicken, okay? And I sat there and I went to, uh, instead of going to like Google and saying, you know, give me a chicken recipe Mm -hmm. and how long I need to cook it at 350 or whatever, is that I just opened up ChatGPT and I said, uh, I'm roasting a chicken, give me directions. And it went, right there. Okay. Did it turn out well? Yes. Okay, good. It was perfect. Um, and speaking of, this is really funny as a side note. So um, I went for a run. Well, no, actually, I didn't run yesterday. I went up and down Camelback. And so I came back and Barry said, so what are you going to make with it? Because it was cooking while I was climbing Camelback. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I'm going to make mashed potatoes. So I'm standing there with the refrigerator open. And on the second shelf, there was one single russet potato in a bag. So I pull it up, and, I, and I'm taking it out of the bag, and Barry says, are you making mashed potatoes with one, one potato? potato? Yeah. I said, I looked at him and said, yeah, why? That's not enough. He goes, so are we going to, like, cut it in fours? And I said, I looked at him and I said, no, we're going to load it up with a whole bunch of milk, and I have, uh, like, some celery and onions, and people won't even know, mash it all up, and I'll just use this one potato. He looks at me and goes, crap. You can't make mashed potatoes. <laughs> well, I'm potato. I had like a whole bag underneath. Oh. I just give him a hard time. You know, you think he'd know by now. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, that's it's like, true. It's, he should. Just, I, it, you should have went through with it. You should have just made mashed potatoes with one potato and, and brought it to the table. <laughs> Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> Don't take too much. Only one spoonful. Right. Only one spoonful. One tablespoon okay. of person. Okay, but I didn't have to go to a recipe website right. where this woman like, Writes this whole thing about, I love chicken. And when I was a child, mm-hmm. my grandmother would make the chicken. And here's how I, we used to make But you don't have to make and Then you're scrolling. It's then there's noxious. pictures. And then what about the chicken gravy? Mm-hmm. And then you're just like, I just want the recipe. The meat and potatoes. That's it. So as far as it, with a digital storefront, it's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time where... You could say, I want to make chicken for Easter. And then you can buy everything that you want right. into chat. It will be delivered. And then your directions will be saved on your calendar for the day that you want to make that chicken. And so, again, now we're not going to Whole Foods, Instacart. Mm-hmm. And so all these things are going to be integrated. in. But to his question, though... How is it going to decide what store to buy all the ingredients ah, from? Okay. 
Advertising. You're going to have to pay. Advertising. Uh, Perplexity just came out today, which if you don't know what perplexity.ai is, uh, it's a direct competitor to not Bard. You said Bard, Mm -hmm. but it's really, it's called Gemini now. Uh, and also Copilot and ChatGPT. There's perplexity, and it's actually backed by Jeff Bezos, $79 million, along with some other people. Even Google has a play in this. Okay. And they announced this morning that, guess what? They're going to start selling advertising. Okay, and how are these ads going to be placed? Uh, Maybe in content, around content, on the side, left. It doesn't matter. It's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And maybe it'll say, like, sponsored whatever it may be. Uh, so if you say florist, I wanted to send flowers to Kim Commando in Phoenix, Arizona, because she's just so fabulous. 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 That you'd say Kim Commando Phoenix flowers, and, you know, and they come up, and then you just done. So is it going to be only those companies that pay money to wherever you're getting your information from that are going to show up oh, as it'll an be, option? it'll be spotlighted on the top, just like okay. it is now. But you will still have the options for the local florist. They have to do that, but it will say, and then there's this, this, this. But you're a, not going to really see it. Why do they have to do that? I just think for public perception. Okay, a and, responsibility. And like, you know, like, oh, you know, you're going to put everybody out of business. Right. It's just not going to happen. So, um, so yes, the web is dead. And, yes, we are releasing a new website, by the way, in about maybe three weeks or so. So if the web is dead, why are you releasing a new website? Uh, because when you see it, you'll know. Uh, okay. It's totally different than oh, any website that's out there right now. Okay. Uh, it's not loaded with pop-ups mm-hmm. and this and that. It's really going to be like more of like a, more like a social experience instead of you – like looking at an article, reading the article, mm-hmm. you know, so it's going to have like a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. Um, but we also have to do that because the website that we have right now, I know it sucks. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but we couldn't get out of some contracts like with Tabulo. They're the ones that do the pop-ups and stuff, but we finally got out of all those contracts. But as far as like, I think we all need to have a website for a while. Okay. But web traffic is going to decrease 65% over the next 12 months. That's a, wow, over one year? Yes. I mean, I, but you're right. I mean, I ever since you said it, I checked in on my own experiences and I don't go to websites. I either get the, I go to Google. I mean, we all go to Google to search something, but I either get the information right there on the Google page without even having to hit a link. Or now with the Gemini technology, like I said, I did a search result and out of nowhere, this box appears and answers all my questions. I don't even I don't even go to Google anymore. How, you just go to ChatGPT. Yeah, I mean, I just, it's a similar. It's a search engine. It's and the same I thing. just but I because I have found that when I go to Google and I look something up, the re, the top results or whatever they think the answer is that I want is out of date. Mm-hmm. And you're like, and you and you're, you're looking at it, you're like, okay, that's not right. I'm not. I'm just gathering information here. But isn't ChatGPT also out of date? Isn't it only? Is it a year and a half since it's been updated? Oh, no. no. Especially if you're not if you pay the 20 bucks a month. Oh, okay. Maybe so, that's why I get those cheap. restrictions. Yeah. Very cheap. Exactly. Frugal. Well, Frugal. but perplexity, they want to charge $20 a month. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, and then either. I'm like, how many people are we gonna, am I going to pay $20 a month to really just get some of the answers to whatever questions? Not a have. lot. I mean, it won't be a lot in the beginning. And then like everything else, it'll slowly start to grow. And it will become the thing to do to go there and pay the money and do it. So now the question is, how do we, as a business owner, get into the AI search results without paying? How do you do it? I haven't figured that out yet. I mean, you have to be pretty dang popular to do that, to where the payment wouldn't even matter. How do we do that? You're asking me? Yeah. I just learned about perplex- perplexity. I can't even <laughs> pronounce it. And you want me to have the answers? I think if more people like, comment, share. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's all it is. Just make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll shoot up those rankings. Comments? Hey, it's Wayne. The printer worked. Comments. Did the comments. printer work? We got comments. That's a downstairs printer? Yeah. Noise. He's an IT genius.
Hey, it's Kim Commando today. And, you know, we are available as an audio podcast, right. which we love that. So if you want to take us on the go, walking, hiking, doing your chores, whatever it may be, you can do that. And we are available everywhere. Just search for Kim Commando today, which it's not the Kim Commando show on over, you know, 500, 800, 900 stations. Be careful. You were very critical of me earlier in the show. Be careful how hard you push this. Well, you, but you were like, oh, I'm on KEZ. I was just, when I re- make a reference to, I was talking on my radio show, just telling people that where the radio show can be found. That's all. Just information. Okay. All right. On my one little station <laughs> in Podunk, Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Gosh. Phoenix has grown tremendously. Too hasn't big. It? It's so big. And so many Californians. Nothing against Californians, but so many Californians. Wait, and I'll tell you, they you can tell, too. Mm-hmm. Have you seen those signs around town that says, do not Californianize my Arizona or something like that? No. People are just putting them in their front yards. Are they really? They're that worried about it. I was reading something um, over the weekend that one in 17 Scottsdale residents is a millionaire. That's crazy. Isn't I need to move to Scottsdale and just drop my odds. You can't afford it. It's true. They're all millionaires. <laughs> Son of a gun. <laughs> Uh, and then we're also available as a video podcast. And so that would be, how do you watch that? You go to Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, X, wherever it is. And then as you're watching the video, and we do it live, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11.30 p.m., uh, or pardon me, a.m. on the West Coast, uh, well, 2.30 p.m. on the East Coast, is that we always love to get your comment. Mm-hmm. Do and, you have any? Um, yes. Uh, Lou says, um, Adam is really good today. Adam. <laughs> You're so funny, Lou. You're so funny. <laughs> uh, oh, Donna's Kelly. I just signed on for Kim's jokes. Thank you. Thank you. For the newsletter? She signed up for the newsletter just for your jokes? Yes. Well, they're in there. So if you like Kim's jokes, go sign up for the newsletter. Uh, let's see. Break time 101. Does the AT&T data breach affect direct TV customers too? Uh, they haven't said so. You would, you'd have to believe, though. But I know. They, it's all uh, one database. There's got to be. I would still be, like, super careful if that was the case. Uh, let's see. Uh, Scrump says, well, frunk you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lisa says, well, would the U.S. have access to Australia's database? They could buy it. They absolutely could purchase all that information. Well, there's, like she says, there's probably some ports of entry that would require paper passports. Yes, but if it is there, you know, any country that's going to allow it, you don't need a passport. It'll all be on your digital ID. And absolutely countries are going to want the tourism from Australia, so they're going to work with Australia when it comes to using it. You know, what's interesting is like when, you know, I travel quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so different countries have different means of you getting into Mm -hmm. their country. Um, Like, for you know, if you're trying to get into the U.K., it's a bit of a hassle. Really? Yeah, I mean, because they don't make it easy. They ask you a few questions, and then they and then everything has to be in like in these little plastic bags. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you want to get into France, they're like, "Come in, just <laughs> come in." I'm too busy to mess with you. <laughs> exactly. Go to the tower and be done with yourself. <laughs> okay. Now, when you get into Italy, they're like, "Hey, how are you? We're so <laughs> glad that great. you're here. Come on, have a pizza." Come on. Okay. So when we went into uh, Tokyo, right? In Tokyo. Okay, so you have to go through these long hallways that you know the long hallways are just there because it's loaded with cameras and they're checking everybody out, facial recognition. Oh, that's smart. As they're doing it. Okay, so then you get down like into the basement, okay? And then there you stand in another line um, and then you go to a kiosk where they do a biometric scan of your eyes. Really? We don't do that in America. Then your fingerprints... That sounds like a brilliant idea. Okay. Very secure. <clears throat> okay. Then, now they have your picture and your fingerprints. Mm-hmm. Now you stand in line because now you need to show them your physical passport. Um, then the guy or the gal takes your physical passport. And by the way, you can't go as a family. One at a time. One at a time. Okay. Uh, unless, of course, you're a child. Uh, and then the guy actually looks at your passport like this and goes, and then looks at the picture that was just taken. To make sure that you are totally authenticated before you get into that country. And then leaving, it's about the same way. That's uh, That sounds like a country that cares about their security. Uh, Florida Cheryl. You think she lives in Florida? No, straight Idaho. Uh, no thanks, Andrew. Next comes your social credit score attached to that digital ID. Absolutely. She's absolutely right. Uh, Scotty says, my numerologist says that the psychics are full of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's so funny. <laughs> Lou says, Arturo Torres. Arturo Torres. Is it not here today? No, Arturo. He must be on at and <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Scrumpy has a couple of ones for me. Scrumpy72. Yes. Says, uh, I stole this from Kim. I was going to go to a psychic. I knocked on the door and she said, who's there? So I left. <laughs> yeah, you definitely stole that from Kim. That is right up Kim's alley. <laughs> I actually did that. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Who's there? Uh, and then Scrumpy says, Kim practices the golden rule. She who has the gold... Has the Makes rule. The rules. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it is. So there was a podcast. I'm not trying to sell another podcast, but it's a very funny comedian. His name is Will Sasso, and he does a podcast called Dudesy. And basically, this whole theme of the podcast is it's either it's controlled by AI. The AI either tells the hosts what to do every single week, or they challenge the AI to do something to see how far they can push it. Do you think it's legit? I don't. But (laughs) (laughs) I do think it is a cool concept. And some of the things, because I've watched it multiple times. Like I said, Will Sasso, I think, is hilarious. A very funny comedian. But they challenged AI to eliminate the need for human stand-up comedians. Okay. And this is what the AI came up with. There's one comedian I really love who would have had a lot to say about everything going on in the world right now. It's George Carlin. So I watched and listened to all of his material to develop my impression of him, and I put together a brand new hour-long stand-up comedy special. There's one line of work that is most threatened by AI One Job that is most likely to be completely erased because of artificial intelligence. Stand-up comedy. Was that supposed to be funny? I know what all the stand-up no. comics across the globe are saying right now. I'm an artist, and my art form is too creative, too nuanced, too subtle to be replicated by a machine. No computer program can tell a fart joke as good as me. <laughs> <laughs> the voice is well, amazing, though. This is just off the top of my artificially intelligent head. A fart was in the middle of a very nasty divorce, so she went to her sister's house, and she asked her sister, Do you think I'm doing the right thing by getting divorced? And her sister said, he's been holding you back for too long. You have to leave that ass. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. right now, George Carlin, they, didn't they try to do this once and the whole estate got so ticked off? Right. Absolutely. But the voice, the cadence, the emotion, the delivery, I thought, was unbelievable. Yes. Uh, the, the writing, uh, we, we, there's, it was a long bit. They did a long bit. The final joke was there is one comedian that everyone believes should have been AI, and that's Bill Cosby. And I actually laughed at that <laughs> one at the end. But just the delivery of the, this AI machine coming up with that presentation, again, needs better writing. That's, are you sure it was really AI? How they, do you know? It was. It was AI. Did they say what they used? They do. They explain in the podcast yeah. what software they use. Uh, but even so, how are you going to find someone that sounds exactly like George Carlin like that and also has the ability to speak and talk in his rhythm and his voice? This makes me nervous. It's really... I mean, do you think somebody could replace... No. Me and No, never. My joke? Everyone else on the planet, but not you. Do you think they... Yeah, you're fine. Well, I'll tell you, George Carlin... There was just one thing that he said that I, we we saw him in Vegas years ago, uh-huh. but to this day I can never forget what he said. He went, did a whole thing about dogs, okay, about how dogs think they're people, and it was truly funny. Oh yeah, Carlin's know? hilarious. Okay, and uh, and how people like you know pay attention to their dogs and they love their dogs sometimes more than their children. And he goes, to, and then he closed it with a line, and I, this line I'll never forget. Do you know? When you get a dog, you're just buying a tragedy. That's true. It's so true. I will never. Fr- I'm like, I'm like, because Barry wants to get another dog. I'm like, I'm like, I hear George Carlin. It's just going to be a tragedy. It's happy times with always a sad ending. <laughs>